welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about Dunhill Edition. Let's give this a, a quick pump. The bat. This is an old bottle, uh, German edition. Got it from a friend. It's really good. Getting that bergamot, a lot of that citrus. One thing that stands out to me the most is the clary sage. Mmm, get a certain smokiness. And I think a lot of the cedar and taka bean are just really refreshing to me. It's just got everything in it, and it's just the right amount for me. I really like this one. Uh, some people will say it smells kind of like an old man, which is cool, because, you know, that's what fragrances can do. You're kind of like imagining something being something else, you know. I imagine I'm an old man in good old London and smoking some Dunhills in a pub or something. I hear there's differences between where they're made and we'll get into that later. Dunhill Edition by Alfred Dunhill is an aromatic fougere fragrance for men. Dunhill was launched in 1984. The nose behind the fragrance is Elena Story. Top notes are nutmeg, Amafi Lennon, Bergamot, and Lavender. Middle notes are Clary Sage, Carnation, Jasmine, Geranium, Cyclamine, and Lily of the Valley. Base notes are Fir, Vetiver, Oak Moss, Virginia Cedar, Amber, and Taka Bean. Uh, off the bat, I get a lot of the citrus notes. The middle note that sticks out to me the most is the Clary Sage. And kind of hanging around is the geranium and jasmine. Uh, one thing I really get from this is a certain smokiness, but at the same time, it's like a refreshness. That's that Virginia cedar, uh, the vetiver. It's kind of like a bit of the smokiness. And the fur, it's really good, really fresh. The scent profile gives it to where it could be worn at any time of the year. It's got something for every time of the year. Um, that strong vetiver, I think it's could be tended to evening wear on uh, most days, but I prefer this on not really a sunny day. If it's the daytime, you know, I prefer it during overcast or cloudy. It just does something great. I don't know why. It just makes me feel better. It makes me kind of one with the mood. It's a very masculine scent. And I think it's laid back, but it's strong, so it doesn't take no mess. In regards to projection, I get a pretty decent projection. It lasts about two hours. Longevity, I would say is a good five hours comes a skin scent for a little bit longer and then it's gone. It's not super long lasting but it lasts enough. Some people online say that it's discontinued. I'm not sure. Uh, but you can pick it up for about 24 bucks on fragrancenet.com and it's, I think it's for the 3.5 floral ounce or 3.4 floral ounce or 100 milliliter. It's, uh... This is not a compliment monster. My significant other, she liked it. My friend, he digs it, that gave it to me, but he didn't, he wasn't feeling it, but I really like it, so I don't really care about the compliments. Uh, I had one lady at work remind me of the policy of no fragrances and uh, I don't think she appreciated it that much. Well, I own a lot of cheap fragrances and I've smelled some fancy fragrances but this is one of my favorites. Probably my top one right now out of 
of all the ones I own. And I own a bunch of crap. But still, it's good. Here we are on forgrantico.com. There are the notes, nutmeg, almafi lemon, bergamot, lavender, middle notes, clary sage, carnation, jasmine, geranium, cyclamen, lily of the valley. Here are the base notes, fir, vetiver, oak moss, Virginia cedar, amber, tonka bean. In terms of longevity, it's moderate. Most users rate the sillage as moderate as well. It's more male than anything else. It tends to be a good value or a great value. All right, let's get into the all the reviews, starting by date. Dixieland Delight says stuff just smells great. Noseblind 70. I had the original around 1986, bought from Shepherd's Bush Market, and yes, it was genuine. I loved it then, and it wasn't considered old man or mature scent by anyone I know. I've just taken delivery of a new bottle after I saw an offer. I couldn't refuse. 100 mil for 21 pounds. Instant throwback to the 80s, unmistakably Dunhill, and I cannot tell if it's different from the original from memory alone. If it is, then it's near identical. However, my first thought after smelling was how similar it is to Cacharel. I had this many years ago, but at the time, I wasn't thinking about how sim similar it was to Dunhill. Anyway... Dunhill Edition is definitely smoother if I really think about it and nicer. You can't not like this. It's a very friendly office safe frag that might get you compliments. At the current price of it, you can't go wrong. Forever Neil said, vintage version, a nice soft projecting fresh foresty smell with spices in the opening. Dries down to a powdery tobacco. Matt Richardson, this is a very nice, mature, gentlemanly scent with citrus, smoke, lavender, and cedar. Although it was introduced in 1984, Dunhill Edition recalls the 1960s laid-back Eau Sauvage era. Doesn't tip, smell typically 80s for sure. Projection and performance are fairly weak from my 21 bottle, but so is the price. Cody Jr. Wow, this is so good. Reminds me of my other favorite Jaguar for men. Super versatile and nice scent. Not too brash, but masculine. Moharam. Great classic that never dates. Mr. Perkasa. First review, guys, so please be gentle with me. My signature scent since the late 90s. It is very uncommon, so people just remember me straight away when they smell this. Disappointed as quality is going down. I have two bottles, one purchased two years ago, a quarter left, and one purchased two weeks ago. Yet the dry down smell is different. The older one is very woody, spicing the dry down, whilst the new one is somewhat still sweet. The citrus blast when applying is still the same, though. To describe the smell, mature, authoritative, formal, but not luxurious, not fun, safe for office and formal work events, conference, awards, seminars, etc., but not enough for non-work formal events, wedding, etc. It is somehow too formal to wear with t-shirts and jeans, whilst smart casual is rather okay. Due to its nature of formal but not luxurious, I find it not very versatile. These are situations I am regularly in. Office, 5 out of 5. Office, casual Friday, 4 out of 5. Smart, casual weekend, 3 out of 5. Casual weekend, 1 out of 5. Business event, 5 out of 5. Formal event, 2 out of 5. 
total 20 out of 30. In short, it smells serious and professional, and I think it's it makes someone smell like he is the guy in charge, LOL. Freddy 15. DE, Dunhill Edition, is a zesty, aromatic, woody, fresh scent. I pick up some tobacco, but it's not listed in the accords. It's masculine, but not hyper-masculine. The projection and sillage are moderate. I love this fragrance. Waldo Jeffers. Old school men's cologne, not as beastly as some others, but should be used with caution unless you intend to melt faces. It is not a pretty scent, mossy, manly. If you are not already somebody's uncle, bypass. If you could rock a mustache unironically, then this, then you are in the zone for this. Cold Deep S. Not mentioned in the notes, but I get whiffs of tobacco like someone has smoked in a room, and this is the best part for me. Fragrant Bob. Dunhill Edition is a beautiful, woody, aromatic fragrance. It opens with pine, oak moss, cedar, vetiver, and some citrus notes. A somewhat old school yet fresh opening. As it dries down, the geranium, lavender, jasmine come through and blend very nicely to create a nice elegant accord. The nutmeg is in the background adding a little spiciness and the citrus notes also persist. This classic masculine scent is my favorite from the House of Dunhill, and I like it even more than the more recent and popular Dunhill icon. Performance on my skin is good. It lasts most of the day and has moderate projection. Dunhill edition is elegance and refinement in a bottle. It probably more suited for the warmer months, but I think you can get away with it at any time of the year, and it is fairly versatile. I love the barbershop genre and Dunhill Edition is one of my favorite barbershop scents in my collection. Great scent profile, good performance, good value for money, and versatile. Everything a good men's fragrance needs to be. Five out of five. Jim Thims, I'm working out of a small splash bottle of this, but based on what I smell, how in the world would this be compared with Yerlan Vetiver, Bijan, or Oscar for Men, 1999? I have them all. I think my downvote at least drove Yerlan Vetiver off the comparison list. I do smell the comparison to Cacharel. Okay, I don't know what he's talking about. Known Serbium. Agree with Glyph about the notes. I also find it disturbingly weak. There is just enough backbone in it. Currently not worth the expense. Cacharel seems a better choice. DMW. For a long time, this was my favorite late 20th century, mainly 80s, new gentleman type of barbershop fragrances. And I loved the quite distinctive way in which the pers a persistent nutmeg slash clove note counterbalances the pottery florals. It settles nicely over to a warm, more soapy wood dry down. However, these days, the clothes seem a bit harsh, and I'm not sure I like the soapiness of the dry down as much as I used to. It has started to smell a bit like flowers in the center of the fragrance have died and now are rotting. I am no longer sure if I love or hate it. Scent Man Jojo, a nice everyday spring summer juice with six to ten, six to seven hours of longevity, similar to Oscar for men, which is better in my opinion. Citrus, clove, some sweetness, and fur and vetiver mingled of my scent skin. A winner and a safe blind buy due to pricing. Enjoy. Glyph, a pleasant enough aromatic men's fragrance from the 80s. I wonder if back then it had more oomph because this just doesn't have it today. Though the notes are very nice, after multiple sprays, this pretty much stayed close to my skin. The dominant notes for me are nutmeg and vetiver. Though I could also smell geranium and a little lavender grounding in this fougere genre. You can buy this very inexpensively, but again, 
it needs quite a bit of spraying to smell much on you. Asante 61. I have been using Dunhill Edition since the 80s. I had about an ounce left of my original Eau de Toilette 100 milliliter sprays obtained from the Newberry Street Dunhill store in Boston that closed its doors around 20 years ago. At that time, I bought a case. All their sealed stock. Searching for and replacing this classic fragrance has been a fun but very frustrating experience. After these last few months on the hunt, what can I say is don't waste your money on the USA, German, or Netherlands editions. They are horrible, very weak, in no way reflect the true original scent. The only ones to buy are produced in Holland or France bottles. These bottles have only Dunhill printed on the glass bottom, no edition printed under Dunhill, and only on the black cap does it state Dunhill edition. The box has edition across the top and Dunhill across the bottom, and Dunhill in large lowercase script in the center along the Oude Toilet and natural spray under that. 100 milliliters are almost impossible to find new, but have had luck finding new 50 milliliters. Interesting. Novo Centologist, Dunhill Edition. It is simply a beautiful fougere of spicy kind. It is strong as, and nice as it was in 1984 when it came out. After application, your nostrils re will receive a solid punch of medicinal and herbal accord. Down the track, the florals and spices kick in, and finally the oak moss, vetiver, and fur shine. Two squirts on the back of my hand last three hours before it turns into a vague skin scent. Longevity and sillage are okay considering what we have to pay for it nowadays. At Moorish Shapiro, I think this is further down, we'll see, but let's start in the future. You can be 100% sure that the original edition from 1984 was as synthetic as the current version. It is so mind-boggling the myths of these magical vintage perfumes are still floating around. Formulations may have changed due to regulations and they might have been diluted to make sure that they are still available today, which is absolutely perfectly fine. And everybody with common sense abilities and a rough idea uh, how businesses work will agree. No offense, but since the 1930s, the vast majority of perfumes have been synthetic. Rod Condi said, strange, no one mentioned any resemblance to Intense by Givenchy. GGI, Dunhill Edition is a bitter, spicy, floral composition with a mossy dry down. Old school fougere. When I smell this, the image I get is of a man, 40 plus, in the bathroom, <laughs> slapping his aftershave splash on before heading out. The reason why I imagine this is because this is of its overall cologne that like vibe. It can be worn any time of the day, year. Longevity and sillage are both, both moderate but lives on as a skin scent. One of the best offerings from the House of Alfred Dunhill I've put my nose on. Simply put, what a man smells like. Great 99. I bought this recent version, not vintage, at the start of this hobby, attempting to understand vetiver fragrances. I also bought Malaysia Umo with that same purchase so i agree with the comparison as this too is a vetiver fragrance f fragrance f vetiver forward fragrance i honestly have not touched this in years and perhaps wore it only once or twice at the at the time of purchase since then i believed i have learned a lot i threw this on today feeling the need for something vintage and wow i really enjoyed it the citrus lemon really melds and creates a lemongrass type vibe with the vetiver. The dry down leans back to a dry vetiver with wood. Initially, I get a touch of fur, but it fades. It does fade to the backdrop very nicely. This is an incredibly solid work that easily can be worn today. It really does not strike me as dated. I would say this is more modern 
in profile than Yerlan Vetiver, which I also love and does not smell the same, but I could see it reminding people of Yerlan simply due to the Vetiver note. But they are quite different from start to finish. It's This suits a mature profile, casual or dressed up. This is not likely to offend as the current version is quite soft. I believe the projection to be within your personal space after the first hour sits pretty closely to the skin, but you will be aware of it for the course of a work day. This is a great cool weather daytime scent possibly even summer but maybe slightly cloying in the heat very clean classic gentleman fragrance that can be picked up at a very good price honestly worth looking into if you enjoy vetiver based scent and just a thrill of finding a hidden forgotten gem thanks for your time cold deep s oh he commented before it perfectly matches with my imagination of a soapy fragrance. In my childhood, this type of fragrance was commonly used in soaps, sharp, sharp, fresh. NSRH said, had this years ago and forgot how much I liked it. I received a new bottle today and I love it. So much so, I ordered another bottle to keep in my office. Definitely a male scent and fairly sophisticated one at that. Has an old school gentleman's club vibe. Genghis Molyneux said, I love all the early classic Dunhill fragrances and own them all apart from the super rare Dunhill English Lavender. Addition is great stuff, spiced with some lovely warm clove, cinnamon, and nutmeg, brightened by some light citrus and florals with some ambers, woods, and musks in the base. I get a slight banana smell, too. I do remember reading that when they made the addition cocktail at the 80s launch party in London that it had a splash of banana liqueur in it too. So someone must have concurred that I've never seen anyone else mention it smelling smelling it in the reviews. A classy smooth and refined British gem and a delight to wear. Shame Dunhill doesn't make sense like this anymore. Jolly 1970 this is a copy DNA to Canvas, the original Brisker, California interlude, Beverly Hills, California. Bought mine in Weinstock's department store in 1983. Quickly addition appeared, replacing Canvas. Oh, interesting. Cold deep, he said it again. Very beautiful fragrance. Green, earthy, vetiver, slight bitterness, soapy. This was a blind buy, and I'm sniffing it 15 minute after application. Very distant relative of Yadagon. Caron and Pasha. Nico Sen. Dunhill Edition is a masterpiece. You can wear it any time of the year, the day. Sweet, aromatic, woody, a little bit smoky, masculine. Respect to Dunhill House that have managed to provide us masculine fragrances because we get tired of these unisex crap of modernity. Mac STR. This used to be a lovely citrus see fresh scent with nutmeg that taking the front but now it is at number three or four as fur vetiver and lemon notes are more prominent usa made scent and longevity is poor compared to the one used in the early 2000s many classic scents are still holding performance as they did 25 years ago but this one and desire red doesn't Scent, 7 out of 10. Siage, 6 out of 10. Longevity, 5 out of 10. Goes away in 3 hours. Value, 7 out of 10. Dr. N.D. Yas. If you are looking for an aromatic fougere from the 1980s that has aged gracefully, Edition is a great choice. It features beautiful soft spiciness of nutmeg over traditional fougere base of carnation, citrus, lavender, and other aromatic spices, aromatics, moss, and tonka. There is something so comforting and inviting about this mixture. It is masculine, but not so loud and invasive like some of the other powerhouses from its era. It wears like a vintage sweater or smoking jacket. Superb. One classic man said, I can smell cloves, nutmeg, 
and something aromatic like flowers. It is light fragrance, but nice one. Not annoying at all. Theodore Gervais. Jeremy Irons signature scent. Interesting. Old Fragman said, This does not smell like Pasha de Cartier as mentioned below, but it is very good. Pasha is sweeter. This is by far more masculine. Not that Cartier, Cartier isn't. This is spicy and woodsy, and I definitely pick up the vetiver, which is one of my favorite fragrances. I quite enjoy wearing this one, and as always, Dunhill fragrances are surprisingly good on my skin. It's very versatile. You can dress this up or down, and you can wear it any time of the year. This is not unisex. It is made for a man. Is it short-lived? Indeed it is. Sadly, maybe 1.5 to 2 hours of projection. So bring that atomizer. For scent alone, 8.8 .8 out of 10. Scort. I love this fragrance. Been wearing it on and off for years. It's not as, not as strong and a little different than the vintage, which I'm sorry to say, pe some people don't want to accept. However, it is still a great fragrance. I smell cloves as part of the top notes and always have even though it's not listed. Wooman Moomin. I have a recent bottle, recent U.S. bottle, and although the, you, the formulation is much criticized, I really like the scent. I do wish the performance were slightly stronger, but for me it's no issue. I can always spray more, reapply, and maybe when this bottle is empty, buy another one of what is the bottom line, a very well-blended, pleasant, fresh, green fragrance for the spring, the autumn, and possibly the summer with more than enough going on for it to not seem thin or one-dimensionally vetiver for it or whatever. Actually, I find if I spray enough of this on my pulse points or whatever, rather than applying it as a walk-through cloud, the performance is quite adequate anyways. If the sillage were noticeably stronger, I'd probably not consider wearing this in the summer as I'm not inclined to wear old school fragrances scent woody old school woody scents though. This formulation at least has a kind of aquias. I don't mean water down quality that ought to work for summer. In that sense, the fact that this formulation is perhaps not as strong as some others probably adds to the product's versatility and might be considered positive. I honestly get annoyed from what often seems like reactionary and sometimes even snobby remarks to the effect that this or the old formulation is better, that this or that new one is a travesty, and so on. For one thing, I imagine that a lot of users have old bottles of perform perfume that have gradually intensified through evapor uh, evaporation. So... That what people are eulogizing are sometimes not actually the older formulations as sold. Also, I don't get the whole tendency to think that a perfume shouldn't change, that the original is inherently the best and so on. That's no fun for users who don't have access to older formulations, which they might not even like. Anyways, I don't see many people saying that computers and operating systems should have stopped developing, say, 35 or 40 years ago. What makes perfume any different? Uh, I don't get it. I don't, don't like a current formulation to buy something else. First world problems par excellence. I really like this stuff. John Island. Masculine, spicy, boldy scent, night or day. And very similar to Halston Catalyst, the notes are also almost identical. We'll buy another bottle when this one is almost empty. Sean M. Moore. This is an absolute masterpiece of a fragrance. And I'm talking about the current Made in USA version. But then again, if you are in this fragrance game and want your experience to be completely re ruined, just... And then just 
keep reading posts about the famous vintage. Such comments are completely useless to me, and whenever I'm in a dilemma, I just go for the opinion of people who are using this fragrance for a long time. In such cases, comments from the Amazon are much more useful. Here is one comment from an Amazon user who bought this current Dunhill. I have been a big fan of Dunhill Edition for many years and was very unhappy when they discontinued the line. I'm extremely happy though now with this new release. The scent is extremely close, if not spot on, to the original. Possibly a little weaker than the original, but when I originally bought Dunhill Edition, it was a splash bottle, so I never used the spray. That might be the reason as it it's not as strong, but the actual scent is spot on. Kudos for someone bringing this back. I'm buying another bottle in case they decide to do away with it again. End of Amazon comment. So please, please, I beg you vintage hunters, lovers, I understand that one or two notes are a sing-song of your youth, but do not have a right to ruin the fragrance experience for the others. Conclusion, this is the same scent like the one released in 1984, a little harsher in the opening and with less longevity. And that is it. It is modernized, freshened up, but the same scent, or would you, the rather glorious vintage 20 years ago, 20 years old, has lost half of its presence because time is not gentle to fragrance if they are not stored right. Mystic Man said, much like Carchel Porom, with its top notes of citrus and lavender and prominent nutmeg, spice, and wood. Dunhill Edition is a bit stronger on the woods and spices and longer lasting and manages to strike perfect balance of strong and subtle. Refined and distinguished, yet has a hint of menace breath in its suave surface. I didn't discover this one until the early 90s, but it has been... One of my favorites ever since. Marcus Shapiro. I think it would be a great idea to have separate reviews for the originals produced with the natural ingredients, a.k.a. vintage, and for the remakes made synthetically available in store. This is due to the fact that many perfumes produced nowadays have little or nothing in common with the original formulas. Everyone having compared the original 80s version of Dunhill's Dunhill edition to the remake of it can confirm that we are talking about a major difference in smell and quality here. Mawawi uh, al Nazi. I bought the Made in USA bottle yesterday and I am so disappointed. What have you done to it? The opening is appalling. The longevity is terrible. Overall, the scent feels tremendously subdued compared to the Made in Germany tester bottle. Save your cash. Zero out of ten. At Jack Hunter, everything you said is true, bro. And although I read your comment before my purchase, I still had hopes it would be at least half decent, but it's not. Earl of Grimm's. One of the best old-time Dunhills still available. Strong vetiver note blended with good citrus and nutmegs. Same strong fir balsam in it. Classy, mature scent. Nice performances. Very similar to Vetiver by Malazia. Jack Hunter. This is a review of the vintage EDT made in Holland bottle as my previous review was for the current made in Germany edition. Back in the day, they had EDT splash versions, which I also have. On first application, you have the citrus with the cloves and nutmeg. And over the course of 10 hours or so, it develops with many notes coming and going. You have a bit of rubbery leather, vetiver, germanium, oak moss, cedars, florals, etc., etc. It's so complex. It's a discreet fragrance, but a persistent one in that you will be able to smell it over its long life. The balance is beautifully done with the clove being kept in check by the other notes. It's a very beautiful, classy, complex scent, in my opinion, probably the best 
Ascent Dunhill has done. When you have experienced the vintage, you can only be saddened in what have they have done to this in its current formulations. They have basically gutted the complexity and removed a lot of notes. Basically, it's a watered-down, tepid citrus and nutmeg scent with an overload of clove that's gone in three to four hours. And this is the one made in German, Germany bottle. I hear the U, made in USA bottle is even worse. If you can find a vintage bottle, it's well worth it as it's a marvel to experience. Phantomias. Lovely spicy fragrance with modest sillage lasting power. Very masculine, and yet I like to wear it too. Seamus One. This is an excellent old school spicy fougere from the 80s. The nutmeg and moss are really up front and are what makes it smell like it's from the 80s. It smells similar to Xerxes by Givenchy, but much drier with and without the leather. There is no sweetness at all in this. It's very spicy and sharp with an aftershave vibe underlying it all. It's very masculine. It would be very suitable for any guy over 40. Though any guy can rock this, I can, can't can imagine a woman wanting to wear this, even women who regularly wear men's fragrances. My rating is 8.5 out of 10. Leona Yayara. Fantastic classic fragrance for the price. A missy citrus fragrance with a pleasant smoky cigarette note in the background. Gorgeous and a steal for the price. Marcus Shapiro. Here he is. Classy, stylish, and not for the kiddos. This one plays in its own league. Very su superior league. But am I the only one smelling ass fault here? D. Don't know what to make of this fragrance. Not sure whether I like it or hate it. <laughs> got it as a gift. Considering its price, whoever got me this wasn't really impressed. Anyways, once I spray, I am reminded of a mechanic's garage massive assault on my olfactory senses. It's not bad, but it smells dirty in a strange way. Strange scent. Improves with the dry down. Longevity, 8 out of 10. Stiage, 8 out of 10. Uniqueness, 8 out of 10. Wearability, 7 out of 10. Versatility, 6 out of 10. Quality, 7 out of 10. Per presentation, 3 out of 10. Overall, 7 out of 10. Edit. I received the Made in USA version. Sellersburg. Dunhill Edition is a lovely fragrance with a combination of vetiver and sweetness, but its current form is very, very faint. I don't know what the problem is, but I do doubt... It was always like this. Maybe it's Eau de Cologne, but it performs like an aftershave. It seems to fade minutes after it's applied. This is a more of a skin scent, body spray, or lotion. Bath and Body Works produces hand cells with, with more performance than this. The Dunhill Edition aftershave ball smells absolutely nothing. The scent itself is mesmerizing. It smells very similar to the original Comes de Garcons. From the 90s to 2000s, Dunhill Edition desperately needs to be brought out of reformulation purgatory because its performance is pretty much unacceptable. Rich Milton. Whoever gets smoky notes from this has an unusual sniffer or needs to get his nose checked. This is a fresh, spicy, clean vetiver based fragrance and it's perfect for spring summer and rainy days it's amped up it's an amped up malasia umo vetiver which is also very fresh and clean smelling but if you find today's malasia very weak this is the solution dunhill edition is one of the best values out there and it's a must try if you like your vetivers light yet yeah, woody clean soapy and fresh it's a legend it should be in every serious collection uh, I'm not reading that. That's in possibly Arabic. Pablo Smelly. Green, lemony, and crispy clean. Not overly spicy. Nicely blended and just enough spice to notice. Excellent fragrance for every day and every situation. 
Irfan Buhari won. In my opinion, Dunhill is the, one of the most underrated houses with so many under the radar modern day as well as vintage fragrances. I wanted to review this classic from the early 80s just because of so many of us have either used in our youth or have childhood memories of someone around us wearing it. Although launched in 1984, this elegant fragrance still remains relevant and very much in style for the modern man. Opening notes are slightly zesty and floral, but it eventually settles down to a very green vetiver, oak moss, and cedar vase. It's an all-weather occasion, evergreen fragrance for all types of indoor and outdoor activities. Few sprays are enough to last six to eight hours easily. I think Dunhill Editions should be a part of every fragrance enthusiast collection. Andy the Frenchy. Nice 80s office scent. Strong nutmeg, supported by lemon and fur with an interesting vetiver moss dry down, nearly giving the impression of smokiness. Great projection in the first hour and then becomes moderate. If you double layer it, you'll get a beastly projection for the f the first couple of hours. Not groundbreaking, but very rareable, unlike Bogart's office powerhouses. And good bar bargain, blind buy, $22 gift, shot, gift box with a gel and all that. Very pleasant. Cacharel Por Leon does it better according to my nose. We'll enjoy my bottle, though. Fall, spring days, 30 plus. Once again, I can't read that. Joe, 38, very fragrance. Very fragrant smell of the 80s and 90s. In the beginning, I really remember the classic green Malaysia, but it has a much better experience since the beginning. I would have to say that who would prefer, prefer the scent to buy green Malaysia because it's they are very similar to each other, but not so. This is a much more complex smell. It is more versatile in terms of its laziness. I think it's still available at a price tag, and it may be the reshaped version, but it's a classic and full of surprises. Value for the money is a great buy. The scent experience is a bit extraordinary, and it's not obsolete at all. Its woody, earthy nature allows everyday wear and can be even for special occasions. It is a pleasure for those who are wearing and for those who are in its vicinity. Great as it is for half a day on my skin like the old one. Nice and eternal work. Ooh, Malazia is Italian vetiver. This is an English fougere. Hmm. Here's what Art had to say. Herbal and cigarette scent. My second bottle now. I'm not a huge fan of 80s cologne, but Dunhill Edition is awesome. i wearing it sometimes whenever I want to smell a bit bad boy. I'm not smoking and want to leave a sillage-like smoker who just finished smoking a cigarette, smoking and cigarettes aromas around my body. As you can see, there no tobacco in the note, but the combination sent... Very similar to a cigarette. I love it. I can imagine a man who wearing Ray-Ban aviator glasses standing beside the classic car from the 70s or 80s wearing a gray suit and smoking. He, he wearing this cologne. It's old school but timeless classic. If you're wondering what it smells like, it smells like herbal, spicy cloves, light citrusy, but not sweet and sour. Florals as the background and cigarettes light vibes from mixed nutmeg and dry vetiver very mature very masculine and versatile uniqueness and leaving the memory to people who smell it this the problem is the performance it lasts just three to four hours uko 99 it reminds me a bit of the current formulation of halston z14 with a little bit less cinnamon I really liked Edition as a fragrance, but the performance was really poor, and as a result, I returned it. Fendi1 said, My review for Dunhill London Edition, made in USA. 
from the sample tester in the shop. My first impressions were that of a musty cigarette ash like smell. Not in a bad way though. Though images of wooden suits, woolen suits, and businessy miscellaneous come to mind. A very serious note, but sets a perfect tone for a manager or someone in a serious business setting. After buying, the smell's a bit different. Where to work? First in office, office woman colleague walks into the office and states something that something <laughs> smells of cats. I think it's the smell of cat it's urine. Must have got a bad bottle. Returned it immediately. Can't wear. Damn. <laughs> El Gonzo. Right in the middle of Louis 7. Drier, more austere, and cultural. Poor little richer, sweeter. It doesn't strike me as a barbershop scent, mostly because of its lightness, though it is a really nice aromatic spicy fougere with a, some sweetness in the background. A real grower on me will give it some time before scoring or until I find a more satisfying scent in this genre. PD, I have the Netherlands bottle and the performance is quite shy. I mean, one hour projection and five hours as a skin scent. Huh. Boozer. This is a great, this is great. I just got myself a bottle made, produced in Holland's Netherlands and the ones made in France are the ones you should be looking for if you want some very good overall performance. The ones that are made in Germany and USA are pretty weak. Citroën Schumagen. I bought this in the year 2000 and st still have a third of it. Fantastic smell. Only will use it for special occasions. Scent, 8 out of 10. Longevity, 9 out of 10. Siage, 9 out of 10. This is an A-list fragrance. Can't get this in my country anymore so going to save the rest of the bottle classic tm floral and spicy sweet and unappreciated not in demand anymore so bargain in price almost forgotten in the 80s to 90s maybe you love maybe i did not love you quite as much as i should your smell is just intoxicating you aged yes you are an old lady now your performance is not like you used to be but I still love you. If you were made by Creed Homage de Parfums de Marley, they would be talking about you every mother effing day. I still love you. 9 out of 10. Original formulation, 10 out of 10. Edit. Compliment received in social gathering on, um, on August 18th of 2018. 28 Cozy 28. I pray you secure the Made in France version, not the insipid usa version 90 minutes have passed since i doused myself and chased the creation on air mouth turned down at the corners with disappoint disappointment of it all i wanted so bad for this to be good as it once was magarth 01 one of my f all time favorites this if this scent was sold by chanel or house of creed you would see thousands of millions of people going crazy for it, but since it's made by Dunhill, it doesn't get the attention it deserves. Addition is more than just a perfume. It's an art in liquid form. If Dunhill sold it for 1000 I would still buy it. 10 out of 10 masterpiece. Unfortunately, appreciated only by few. Flirt Boy. I don't know what the reformulated version smells like, but the vintage one I has... I own has a heavenly but not heavy clove note that blends beautifully with the nutmeg and this cologne lasts for many hours. However, I wouldn't recommend this to anyone under 30. Just my opinion. I own the Made in Germany bottle. I don't know what the USA version is like, but judging from my experience with Classic Dunhill, the USA version, probably weaker and simplified. Robbie X. A pleasant floral and spicy dunhill last and projects well on me addition has attention getting sillage and a lovely man's perfume al Mayaini. first this perform perfume is reformulated became different from the 80s version and then it discounted for a period of time discontinued for or discounted for a period of time now there are tow versions available one of them 
made in USA and the other one made in Germany. I didn't see the Frank version for for this reasons I don't know which one I have to buy. Brian J13 simply stated this is my favorite scent ever. There is one, only one minor problem I have with it. It should be longer lasting and have greater sillage. Otherwise, as close to perfection as I've ever smelled in a fragrance. I've I often pick up the bottle just to smell it because it makes me happy. Uh huh. I wore it in the fifth grade. Everyone asked what I was wearing. Short story aside, I'm so glad it's still available. This respectable masterpiece is for the gentleman only. Boozer in 2017 said, Great scent, but the U.S. version, very weak. Last on me, 45 minutes, seems very diluted. Don't get the box where it says Dunhill London Edition. You have to get the box that says Dunhill Edition. And the edition word not written in silver framing. Or the ones, or the best ones with the word edition written on top of the lining of the box. And Dunhill on the lower part of the box. I've learned the hard way. Or you could say the pricey way. Forget Freeman said. Thumbs up to Savali's review below. My thoughts exactly. Has to be one of the most inoffensive scents I've came across. That is not to mean that it has no character. Far from it. Addition is subtle, warm, yet fresh. It will give you the impression that you are not wearing a cologne, but have just walked out of the shower. Also, from reading about problems with longevity, mine is made in the USA. Personally, I don't get that. After applying, after a shower, I still smell it at least eight hours later. Maybe it just reacts with me. To be honest, I have yet to come across a Dunhill that f I feel neutral towards. I find them to be well-made. The bottles are especially beautiful in their simplicity and perfect for when you are socializing or at the office as they tend to be restrained yet classy. Dunhill is probably aimed at a mature 30 plus market, but I think a young guy would stand out and ha as having class by wearing this at something like a job interview. Edition is slowly becoming one of my favorites. Sedastian. At first, with the opening, I was uncomfortable with the balsamic scent, but after a few hours of dry down, I grew fond of its base note of both oak moss and fur. Prevailing such a good scent for the grown-up all anyways, this is a good one to me and can be, can be last for at least eight hours in warm weather. Molson95 gives it a five out of ten. Civile. This is a great masculine subtle scent. This is an example of a scent that might prompt people to think he smells great rather than his cologne smells great. This does do better for me in cooler weather and would be would and it would make a fantastic offer scent, but overall I prefer to wear it casually on the weekends or for home use where I will reapply often as my fiance loves it on me. I also find it a good, reliable travel scent that never fails to get me compliments from friends, family, and strangers alike. Elegant, soothing, complex, yet approachable, extremely versatile, by day, night, casual, formal, and a steal at current prices. Your Lawn Freak said, Dunhill Edition can be summarized into a wonderfully, wonderful, refreshing, aromatic fragrance. This is an ideal cologne for warm weather, but I it could work just as fine in cooler temperatures. Why? It has a fascinating, cool, warm juxtaposition. Lavender, vetiver, and nutmeg are what I detect the most. The vetiver-nutmeg combo gives it a warm, spicy backbone, while the lavender and citruses soften the composition. This is a quintessential gentleman's cologne, a must-have for fougere enthusiast. It is from the 80s, and I should say proudly so. The decade of origin should not limit your ability to enjoy beautiful fragrances like this one. It bears a resemblance to Cachier Pour Homme, but I th prefer Dunhill because the nutmeg is toned down a bit, whereas Cachier is very in your face. Smell great, my friends. 
Bumijo. I do not have all the sophisticated descriptions of scent and perfumes, but when it comes to Dunhill Edition, the vintage version, I can simply describe it as a perfume that makes you feel really good. I have about a third of bottle of the old version. It spreads its fragrance just just passing by without even moving the bottle. I discovered this feeling recently when I released it from hiding and when I passed by the ambient smell it created I had this joyful good feeling and I believe this is the ultimate that a great perfume should do. Dunhill have the duty and most and must kindly bring back the original version. I'm sure the new generation, I'm 61 years old, must have the same chance we had in enjoying it. John E. Bowie, the current version, made in USA, is still a watered-down version of the original. Disappointing. Smelling great in 2016 said, I've seen many Dunhill fragrances in the store, but have never owned any. However, I'm curious about its releases of the 80s and 90s, particularly for men, Edition, and Burgundy. So when I saw a 100 milliliter bottle of Edition going for $15 USA, I simply couldn't resist. I was really expecting great things after reading overwhelmingly positive reviews about this fragrance here. People simply love this fragrance. On unboxing my purchase, I was a little disappointed with the presentation. The design of the bottle and cap are distinctive and elegant, but the cap felt light and plasticky. Not a major issue, but I can imagine the vintage products would have had a solid heavy cap. When I removed the cap, I noticed the metal atomizer head is quite crudely attached to the bottle. It looked quite naked and unfinished. An attachment to hide the fold of metal to the bottle would have made the presentation look perfect. I'm not complaining given the low price I paid, but it's a great pity that this stunning bottle design isn't given the respect it deserves by its ma makers. As for the scent, well, what more can I say that's not already said here? It's truly one of the most intoxicating, addictive, alluring, romantic, seductive fragrance that I've ever come across. It's amazingly complex with sweet, spicy, aromatic notes playfully swirling around me and delighting me through the day. Performance and longevity are absolutely remarkable. Two days after wearing it, I rushed back to the store to get a few more bottles as I decided that I'd never want to run out of it. Three of my friends, after smelling it on me, immediately went and got a bottle each. It's really that good. A 9 out of 10 for this great scent. Nubiv 11. Just bought a new one. I can't believe the 1984 vintage is back. Not like two to three years previous production. Thank you, Dunhill. I'm so happy. 10 out of 10. Murray Susanto. Timeless fragrance for men. The scent never wears out. I bought a bottle just a couple of days ago. Surprisingly, it's still, surprisingly scent still the same I had back in the 80s. I must say and will always adore this Dunhill creation. It deserves 10 out of 10 score. Koala 501. Please, if you are to try the superb masculine, you must obtain the vintage version. Why? It is rounder, richer, and with excellent projection and surrounds the wearer with old school, but by no means outdated sense of sophistication and grandeur. Dunhill Edition is one of those masterpieces, masterful blends that makes me understand why I truly love fragrances. A timeless, masculine, good taste and class with a great sense of style. For myself, I would only wear this with a suit. It is one of those rare fragrances that exudes a subtle power and charm. Clove and oak moss, slight citrus on top, and geranium and nutmeg so beautifully interwoven. This, for me, is a man who smells, who knows himself and is unapologetic about his chivalry and grace, though knows how to be forceful and persuasive when needs to be. 
James Pond in a bottle. For me, a masterpiece. Marfrere Cartier Parsh, Pasha soft version. Escoteric. Classy fragrance, super in its composition, and a lovely woody taint. It still smells timeless. All the Dunhills, in my humble opinion, are great, with a few that make it to into my top ten. This is one of them. Every time I wear it, it takes me to a special place. It is like beautiful wine or a woman you long f- for that sensation never ends. Makes one feel very special and distinct. Yoga 14. I finally got my hands on the Dunhill edition. Oh, man. I cannot explain how nostalgic I am right now. This scent brought back so many beautiful memories of my childhood. God has been very kind to me to let me experience that feeling. Those days, those moments, once again in this lifetime. The smell opens up with a nice rubbery note. And the fragrance becomes so sexy after dry down that I feel aroused, bounded, and captivated. The new composition is actually a flanker to the original one I had 26 years ago, but nevertheless, the feel is intact. I would suggest all men to have this permanently in their collection. You will never go wrong with this. Be it day, night, office, party, home, gatherings, anywhere, just anywhere, guys, is a sure shot. Real panty dropper. Pro nose. I am glad the addition is back again. Very unique and timeless scent for men's. Dunhill edition is simply perfect. In other words, flawless. And even the new version is perfect. A true must for men's. The man's. J-N-J-S-J. I think I have new reformulated version i was wondering how all of a sudden I, it was readily available in stores the newer version is definitely tighter softer watered down compared to the original it does not even last a mother freaking hour on me and a person standing next to me can barely smell it in my opinion dunhill probably should have not relaunched this fragrance if it was not going to stick to the original formula which was brilliant ck man 2011 said i can't read that. Jerry can. In Vakanas is somewhere hot. India, per- perhaps. Then this is as important to you as malaria pills. Beautiful. Citrus, spice, and woods with subtle floral additions. Great longevity and oodles of simulating vibe to keep you comfortable from Tamil Nadu to the Himalaya. Been around for a long time now and easy to see why. Could imagine the great man wearing something like this. Dunhill's best for sure. Aqua de la Vita said Dunhill edition is like an old baseball glove of my younger days. There's something about it you just don't want to give up until there's none left over. After many years later, I was going to the store that had some discontinued fragrances and there was a hundred milliliter bottle which I wasted no time and bought it at a really good price. Now about this phenomenon for fragrance. K1 hit the nail on the head. It is different. This juice has depth with herbal woodsy notes with a touch of bergamot which is sinfully naughty when you want to tempt attention and it will do that. The heart of this fragrance comes from the nutmeg with floral notes of lavender and jasmine. This fragrance really becomes desirable from the oak moss, Virginia, cedar, and fir. A really masculine, woody, aromatic scent being luxurious. Both amber and tonka bean add warmth to this fragrance, making it absolutely nothing like anything else in the market. A real masterpiece from Dunhill. Longevity and sillage are extremely high quality. Overall opinion, believe me when I tell you, if you want a fragrance which is considered the best of Dunhill, limited edition is for you. If you ever find you definitely understand what this fragrance is definitely unique and deserves the accolades, thank you Dunhill for the amazing fragrance. 10 out of 10, absolutely 5 stars. Q80. In the middle of 1991, my family traveled to London, 
United Kingdom. We stayed there for a couple months right after the war that my country was in. I was a child back then, and my mom and auntie always takes me and my brothers to Oxford Street. So we went to see to Selfridges once, and there was that promotion of Dunhill Edition in the main sector. Models were the ones who market this perfume, so you can't believe how many lipstick was all over my face from those beautiful models. One of them there were a tall, beautiful Asian female model. Once she saw me, she thought I was Asian as well. So the kisses came on me like rain. According to that, <laughs> mom bought me this perfume where also it came with a medium to large handbag that until today I have it. And that was the first ever perfume that I got. And since then, it became my passion and my love. As years go by, I kept buying it as I forgot I was doing this since just two weeks back when my younger brother told me that he wants some perfumes from me. And he asked me something that even took me back in time when he said, I remember a few days back, I smelled a perfume you wear that remind me in the 90s when we used to play Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast in your room. Then I took this perfume out and sprayed it on him. He felt quite comforting and happy as it truly reminded him of the good old days. It is my long-lasting love. It is very comforting and best in their collection. Or let's say the only one I'd where from Dunhill, it has a lavender and a few combinations that makes it blissful. I have edited my comment as it was too harsh on the new formula, which I tried on on the 23rd of February 2014, and I was over-exaggerating, calling it chaos. Honestly, it, it wasn't that bad. What made me think it was chaos was me sniffing a lot of perfumes at the same time as the seller was spraying a lot of perfumes on my arm, they got all mixed together. Specifically, the seller was trying to s was spraying the annoying collection of Theory Mugler. Well, that'll do it. I tried just today again, April nineteenth of twenty fourteen. The new formula. The main difference was the top notes, as they are kind of different in a way that the new formula has a bitterness in it, and it remains even after the dry down, but you won't notice it much if you don't have that sensitive a nose. To me, there are quite different things between the new and old. I don't want to be harsh again, but there are similarity, and I need to give it more time because this formula is new, and even though the formula has that has given me in 1991, I was seven years old, This it remains a loving memory, and I hope the new formula will be the same. Sacred System said, Dunhill Edition is a sophisticated, timeless masterpiece. Spices, florals, woods, and so much creating elegance and warmth in a manly manner. One of the most versatile fragrances I have ever want, worn. Edition doesn't need to shout from the rooftops to make, make its presence known. It doesn't try to be something it's not. Wearing Edition simply makes me feel good with myself and the world around me. The Luminary said, I believe Dunhill Edition has been re-released as it's become avid, more avidly available online with a modernized box. Likely reformulated, but may be discontinued after all. I happen to own a full bottle of the vintage version and will not know the difference between that and the current version for a while. Ali 3 af had this nice frig two days ago, and in one word, perfect. Spartan said, this one has been discontinued. S Spartan also said before, Dunhill Edition for men and D all come in the same bottle. That might account for some of the confusion. Personally, I enjoy Dunhill fragrances. However, they are strictly middle of the road 
in quality and price. Houdini. Four at House Bliss. Are you sure the juice changed color? There is a Dunhill for men that comes in the same bottle and is the color you described. House Bliss said, I've had this for a while, but I always thought the top smelled a little off. I bought a new bottle recently, and now I understand why the first one didn't win me over. The one I've had for longest has gone bad. It has a golden brown color compared to the new which has a light green, as should be. This is a very fresh citrus fragrance. I find the nutmeg much more balanced than in Cacharel Lelm. It's really good. Dubera Rob. As others have noted, this is a perfectly blended masculine scent. A terrific fragrance of professional presence and purpose. Definitely one of the most favored work scents. Never knew I loved cloves so much until I wrote really began to appreciate Dunhill Edition. May take some time to get used to, but when you do it, you'll find a second skin. Can Canac, a very nice perfume in the classic cologne style with citrus and spicy notes at the start and then dries down to a woody vetiver and tobacco note. I know tobacco isn't listed, but it's what it smells for me. Projection is kind of soft. You won't be knocking people over across the room with this for sure. And longevity is also average. I get about five hours tops. It is a short ride, but while it lasts, it's very fabulous. A very polished, mature, refined, something you'd imagine somebody like Clark Gable or Cary Grant will wear. Definitely not for the boys. The restrained projection probably makes this work safe but it is more of an occasion perfume for me like so many great ones just wish it would last longer edit my dad loved it so much he gifted i gifted him a bottle he is more of a gentleman than i'll ever be and this suits him perfectly perth th legendary very unique rare a definitely a masterpiece took me years to find i saw it on sale in an online store, didn't hesitate to buy. Everything seems to be right. Flowers, lemon, and vetiver. 10 out of 10 for work. this work of art. Houdini 14. Houdini 4. He said, this takes me back. Edition is so unique. Green soap-like, herbal, and has a maturity about it. Very, But very odd at the same time. I'd completely forgotten what it smelled like until I found it recently. I need... It in my life. It's incredibly smooth and delivers all notes in equal measures like a symphony of loveliness. Great stuff. Mansour Ahmad. A legendary fragrance. One of the best fragrances of all time. To me, I give this masterpiece 10 out of 10. Brain in a Vat said, This is one of my three only in a lifetime acceptable fragrances it scores a 10 out of 10 alongside Eau Sauvage and Gucci Pour Homme 1 nothing more to say the best ever made in the 20th century mystery aroma to those around that smell it and totally different from all the other EDTs hmm further note I just bought this week via Germany not sure how as it's supposed to be discontinued and smells different Maybe I forgot the scent, as it's been some years, and maybe it's been reformulated. This one is similarly quite song, strong, but very peppular, peppery dry down, which is good in my book, but definitely different. Difficult to compare, as the vaporous ha <laughs> mist of time has separated my nose with this for at least five years. Has it been reformulated? Does anyone know? And is it being made under license abroad? Seems authentic enough bottle. Redbeard. I got a splash bottle of this blind, but cheap, right before it started getting harder to find. I think this might be the best straightforward spicy soap I've ever s encountered. Smells a little bit old-fashioned to me, but in an extremely respectable, not outdated way. There's enough soapiness about it to make it clean, but not slimy residue on your soapy on your skin soapy.
It's really nice office scent, but it's not utterly banal as a lot of other safe ones. A sort of compromise between subtle, subdued office and richly formal. It makes me feel like a guy who's serious and smart at work and who wants to allude to a traditional professionalism without giving up the ability to loosen up a little and be candid with coworkers. It's really too bad that it's been discontinued. Others in its family are still fairly good, but borderline too sweet. I'm looking at you, Bouge de Portugal. Hopefully one ounce will last me a while. Zerk Icon is the best substitute I've found, albeit weak, but still cheap enough to spray heavily. The poor man's BDP, uh, Pierre Cardin, is stronger and less sweet. Another good cheap sub. Punctured Bicycle. I'm surprised to find so many testaments to its masculinity. I'm a woman, and it's been a favorite for years, although I began wearing it because my then boyfriend wore it, and it reminded me of him. I always found it very light and sensual, very modern and gender neutral. There is a big, soft, beeswaxy quality about it, as well as the wood and white flowers. Despite the touch of lemon and lavender, there are no sharp corners here. Just a big, soft, balmy pillow of scents. Delicious. Amal 73. The notes are bold and brilliant. Excellent masculine overall presentation. I have hardly traced any lemon. I recommend to give it a try. I personally like it. Not too expensive. Good for men. June 0711. This is a lemony, woody cologne. This cologne is suitable for with suit wearing by adult people. Mori Susanto, one of the best male fragrances in the 20th century. I've always wanted a fresh product, but with this same exact formula as it was in the 90s. Although there are many fragrances on the market, this one still kicks for it deserved 10 out of 10. Koala 501. This is one of the greatest blends I've come across. It is a masculine fragrance that, in my opinion, is timeless. The clove is so well blended that it never overpowers and adds to the quality. Add the nutmeg, geranium, and sage, and we have a classic for a gent. Some may find this dated, but I certainly don't. This is what a man should smell like. Scent of Man. A very traditional English gentleman's scent. You can imagine gentlemen in suits having a shot of Johnny Walker's and Havana cigar at a Savoy, at Savoy, London, after hours. Unleashes with a spicy citron, cl- with clove and nutmeg, heating up the fare. The heart settles the fire somewhat with an infusion of herbaceous notes of cedar fern with the nutmeg and cloves. It does give me a leather, leathery vibe, too. The base notes lightens with some amber, vetiver, and fur freshness. It is from the era of Azaro, Cartier, Porom, and Aramis, worn with tailored suits and braces formula, formularly, and unbuttoned shirts and hairy ca- chest casually. Hard to find contemporary available scents. I'd suggest M7 Fresh, Fahrenheit, and possibly Gucci Pour Homme, although this has incense making it richer and smoother. Sillage and longevity are strong and lasting not out of 10, possibly too strong for a scent for daily uh, contemporary usage overall, 8 out of 10. P.S. Hairy chest is mandatory. Jack Hunter. Well, my perception is going to be a little skewed as it's been over 20 years since I've smelled this. The old formulation opened with spicy, fresh spicy citrus, which was quite strong. Then it got woody and mossy in the drive down. It was very strong, and the top notes were more sparkling and spicy. The new form reformulation seems very muted and light in comparison. The top notes do not seem as spicy or as strong as I remember and this one seems more herbal than I remember, too. It seems like the Diet Coke version of the glorious 80s version. Maybe it's my memory. 
I like it as it has this classic gentleman's old school spice sea citrus woody character, but it smells like it has been watered down comparison to the eighties version. I hate it when they have done to a lot of classic eighties ver fragrances as today's versions are a pale reflection of the glory of what they should be. 80s original formula, 9 out of 10. Model, modern reformulated formula, 7 out of 10. Bonovox. There aren't very many details about the smell of this fragrance in only three reviews. I am trying this today. We're going back in time. Back to 2011. As a sample, and I like the opening notes, which are very fresh, but I have a slight woodsy, uh, spicy scent to them. I cannot detect lemon at all. It starts out with a hint of spice, and I agree with the review below that there is a bit of clove that I've detected. For me, it is very light, which is why I think most people don't love but would rather like this product. After the middle notes come out, in the form of a more woody fragrance. So think spicy at the beginning, woodsy in the middle, and add, maybe it's just my nose, but I don't detect any floral fragrances at all. Uh, not a whiff of carnation, low rose or lavender. So I think the category that this be placed under woody sp spicy. Uh, it does hang very close to the skin. It's very professional smelling. I think this would be geared towards those over 30 to 50. I don't know about the longevity because I'm only in my second hour of wearing it. I think I would have to purchase a bottle to get a spray that a dabber is to see how the fragrance spreads. Although I would say it's an 8 out of 10, maybe less. I would not spend more than $45 or 50 for a bottle. Okay, thank you, Bonovox. Robbie X. Originally said, way back in 2010, a lovely, spicy, floral fragrance with a good longevity and character. As stated above, there seems to be clove in here, but it is a, a great blend of notes. Another excellent Dunhill scent for men. You ever wish you were someone else? Or at least could be someone else? Or didn't have to deal with all that you gotta deal with or you wanna deal with different stuff Dunhill Edition makes me feel like I am someone else do you ever wanna be someone else? do you ever wish you were different? like that I wish you could change your life just like that. 